Hey everybody, Asher here with another Star Sector modification guide. Today we're going to talk about some mods you can make without actually installing any mods. For instance, I get a lot of questions about how do I change my fleet size uh, from any of this default range of 200 to 500. I think that's actually the default range here. We're going to talk about that as well as some other things and it all comes down to the magical settings file that is actually in the Star Sector directory. So let's jump there now. So welcome once again to our default install location for Star Sector. This is the same folder that I've used for the other demonstration videos here. We're not going to worry about uninstall star sector.exe. We don't do that here. We're going to go to star sector core, which is an important folder. And if we scroll down, there's a folder called data. And then suddenly everything's arranged alphabetically. So there is a folder called config. And inside config is a very important file that you should know called settings.json, which immediately opens up as a text file. Now, this is a great text file for you to explore if you want to go ahead and make changes. Once again, kind of like last time when we talked about this, I would suggest you make some kind of backup here. So I don't know, you can copy, paste it, anything else like that, put it in another folder. But once you do that, let's go ahead, open this up. And I'm going to look at a few different things that I like to do to adjust and change the game here, even without installing any mods. The first thing that I would recommend is um, the ship explosion change. Uh, this is something that a lot of mods do by default, but if you are one of the people that loves the giant blinding explosion anytime you destroy a ship, even a freighter, then you're one of the few. If you would like to change that, all you've got to do here is to go to enable ship explosion whiteout and change it from true to, you're never going to guess this, false. Make sure you spell false correctly though. And then, once you destroy a ship, even a frigate, it won't explode into a blinding white flash. It just explodes kind of regularly, and the graphics for that are neat. I will say I know it's immersion breaking because you're destroying a ship with antimatter fuel, but whatever. It's a lot easier on your eyes because you're going to be destroying a lot of ships. The next thing that I like to change is uh, actually max battle size. There's a lot of model, uh, battle size mods, so I'm going to put the whole thing in there. Um, you do have some options here. You have minimum battle size. We could like drop this down to uh, 100. Um, we could keep the default battle size kind of in the middle here, but let's do something stupid. Let's do something like 1600. Typically in my saves, I have done something like upping it to 700 or 800. 1600 is a lot. That's, that's a lot of capital ships you're stacking in there. But you'll see that once we go ahead and open the game here in just a second, that we can play with those values on that slider a little bit differently. So let's do that now. Also, in order to be able to see these settings in game, do not forget to save your settings.json file. So once again, we're in the main star sector screen. And if we go to settings, you'll see under settings, go to settings and things have changed. Our battle size is suddenly at the default we set. We can drop it all the way down to 100. We can drop it all the way up, or drop it, drop it all the way up. Raise it all the way up to 1600. Would you ever want to play like this? I don't know. It's your game. Do what you want. If you want to do tiny space battles, that's fine. Now, let's keep in mind, what battle size means in the game is that uh, enemy fleets could still deploy like 600 deployment points worth of ships. What this means is the number of ships that are allowed on the field at the same time. So it could be that you're only allowed to have like 100 uh, deployment points total, which means everybody's limited here. Or you could do something like this and everything is incredibly unlimited. But you may actually need to force the AI to run more ships. Let me show you how to do that. All right, next thing to look at is uh, max ships in fleet. And that is something that is very important here because what it'll let you do is go through here and say you want to have, there is a cap for ships for how this works at 30. You can change this to higher if you want to. You can change it up to 50. But there is another thing that is uh, max ships and AI fleet. You can do the same thing here. This is what I'm doing in my current modded playthrough. We'll see how that works out. But at least in theory, this should let the AI run more ships. Um, there is also a ships uh, max ship warning widget here. That's just to put up the counter that says, hey, you're close to your fleet cap. But if you change it to 50 and keep it at 25, that 25 warning isn't going to mean as much. Um, but you can also change the maximum officers in an AI fleet, which is important. You want to match that to what a max skill player can get. Well, wait, Asher, how do you change the base number of officers that a player can get? Well, I'm glad you asked. You do base number of officers. See if I can spell that right. And here we go. Right now, the base is eight. 
That is eight without any skill management points. You can change this as much or as little as you want to. Let's do 25 officers. That's really stupid. Let's do it anyway. Um, we're going to go ahead and hit save again, and I will be able to show you hopefully real quick that we have successfully changed our officer cap. I haven't changed the AI officer cap, but you'll want to do that for game balance purposes. Or maybe you don't. So here we are once again loaded up next to this wonderful Ludic Path planet. Praise Lud. And all we have to do here is if we just take a look, left click on this, you can see that our officers now here, we have two unassigned officers. We have 25 officers available. And this is once again, no mods installed, just literally changing the settings file. Cool stuff. Now the final mod that's in the settings file that I wanna show you is something that I used a lot as a new player learning the game. And this was before there were story points to let you get out of a jam or get you out of fights that maybe you couldn't win because sometimes bad surprises happen. And we're just gonna go real quick to the God Mode setting, which is in the settings.json here. This is a hundred times damage dealt, no damage taken. So if we turn that over to true real quick, that will mean that if you just wanna fly around, have fun, just blow shit up with no consequence, this is how you do it. If you are stuck in a terrible fight and you're able to save and get out of it and wanna go back and just get through it, this mode is here to get you through it. Let me just show you what it looks like in game real quick. Okay, so we're back in the save again. Let's go ahead and go to the refit screen. Yes, we know all the stuff. We're just gonna run a quick simulation with our happy little ship. You can see we have a dual light auto cannon and we have some Reaper torpedoes. Reapers are good, but maybe uh, we're gonna have a little bit of a problem if we're facing all of these opponents. Now, if you've seen what God mode does in this game, you probably know what's going to happen, but this is more for those of you that are uninitiated. We just have our tiny frigate versus all the big things here. And this is literally god mode. You take no damage. This frigate should... Whoa, that meteor should be dying right now. We're not dying. Instead, we're just going to one-shot these guys. And uh, once again, we're not taking damage. Everybody's firing on us. That's just the, the joy of sometimes you just have a bad day and you just want to blow shit up then you can make all of your bullets turn into Reaper torpedoes. But yeah, that like I said, it's just something that I want you to be aware that's in there. This is a single player game. I mean, unless you're doing like PvP battles and stuff. But this is a single player game, so don't let anybody judge you if you are sitting here and just say, you know what, I just wanna turn on this mode and just blow everything up. It's cool. And see, once again, Tiny Frigate, who knew, who knew? You don't mess with the Ludic Path here in God mode. It's on Praise Lud, I guess. And one more important reminder here that once you're done doing what you want to do, if you do not want to keep running with it, make sure to go back to your settings and turn the destroy everything mode off. Just change it back to false, save, you're good to go. One more thing I want to show you though is actually pretty important, but a, possibly a little bit controversial. But once again, this is a single player game. So if you ever just want to know what's going on in your world, you can actually go into the campaign XML. Now, I would be very uh, like careful with actually, what's the word I'm looking for? Actually like saving and trying to edit stuff here because this is a gigantic file and it only gets bigger as the game goes on. But this has all the information for all of these systems and everything that is in this file for your save from the world that's generated. But there are some specific things that you can actually search for if you want to look for them. Just to give um, one example here real quick, if we look for hypershunt, you can see that we have found one coronal hypershunt, probably two coronal hypershunts. There should just be two. So we possibly have two. And then what you're going to have to do, because it is part of a system here, it is under the station setting here, um, you're going to have to scroll up a little bit to try to see which star it's at. It's in but once you do do that, um, we'll just take a moment with the power of video editing. And then after quite a bit of scrolling up, because usually these hyper shunts are in blue supergiant systems. I think they have to be in blue supergiant systems by default. Uh, then, then they have a lot of stuff here. Let's see the Cal Calumnos star system. So we're gonna just double check because we should be able to pull this up in game. And if it's a blue supergiant system, then that should be where one of the uh, Dorito bins are out in space. 
So here we are in the save again, and we're just going to go over to Intel. We're going to go over to Planets. Strangely, we have to search by stars, and then we have to sort it alphabetically. What word am I looking for here? We're looking for the Ks, so I have to sing the ABC song to myself again. I know some of you speak other languages, probably have other songs, but H-I-J-K. It's a blue giant, so maybe it's not a blue super giant. Maybe we didn't get it right. I don't know, but we are all the way over here. Let's show on the map, and if we zoom out, it's pretty far. Let's see if we can actually make it there real quick. So here we are a little far away from home at the Kalimno system. Um, you can press 2 to check your fuel range, by the way, if you didn't know that. But let's see if this actually does have a, a hyper shunt next to it. I guess we'll fly in from the um, inner system jump point just to build the suspense. This is a guide video. I don't know why I'm doing this, but sure enough, shows what I know about the game. This is a blue giant, not a blue super giant, but there's a coronal hyper shunt right there so obviously we can e-burn into it and see what goodies are behind there i'm not going to spoil it for you if you haven't seen it in game but you can use the settings file to actually find these things so that's going to do it for this one once again there's a lot of things that you can do in star sector without installing a single um, modification in the game just by adjusting the settings and possibly looking for things in the save file. I'd be very wary of changing things in the save file. It can break or get unstable really easily. You kind of need to know what you're doing. The settings file, once again, just make sure you make a backup before you go and tweak things just so that you can get back to your old settings if you want in case you mess things up. But that'll do it for this one. This is Asher. Like I said, I've gotten a lot of requests to put out some quick guides and so hopefully these are quick enough. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you all. If you have any other questions or tips or other settings that you like to change in the config file, definitely put them in the comments. Uh, we'll do more Star Sector and all that fun stuff in the future. Thanks for watching. Y'all take care.